for Mike Ryan! What's up, guys? How y'all feeling? Good bad, huh? Hell yeah! Y'all make some more noise for Jake, man. He's great, right? He was like so nervous, we were talking before the show, and he's like, man, this is, you know, like my 10th time on stage. And I was like, oh, your 10th show? That's not that bad. And he goes, no, this is my 10th time on stage. I was like, son of a bitch. I made a mistake booking this guy. And then he fucking crushes, and I'm like, son of a bitch. I gotta go after this guy. Did y'all see his Kill Tony episode? With Shane Gillis? If you would have just told him he was retarded, that would be the next fucking regular right there. That's all you had to do. All you had to do was fucking lie, man. I'd have been up there. Nah, I'm not gonna pretend to be retarded. I'm not gonna go. You guys like impressions? Fuck. People normally say no to that. Let's just move on. Uh, I've been doing comedy right at about nine months. It's a lot of fun. But one thing I've noticed is that I don't fit in. Like, I don't fit into the comedy scene. I don't fit in with, like, a lot of these comics because, you know, they were all, like, class clowns or they were molested. <laughs> the lucky ones were both. <laughs> And I feel like at 37 years old, I'm too old for either of those things to happen to me. <laughs> like, at least without it being my fault, you know? <laughs> like, if I get molested at 37 years old, I'm sorry. that's on me. That's my bad. What was I wearing? <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> Comedy's cool. I got to do a few shows in San Antonio recently. That was cool. It's like the first time I've been in San Antonio in like 10 years. For a reason. Uh, last time I was there, I almost died. I tried to start a fight with a six foot six Guatemalan. I didn't even know they came in that size. And I know he was like from San Antonio, from San Antonio, because he had two one o tattooed across his forehead. And you're getting the picture, right? Like a guy I should not be fighting. And that's the fucked up part because I was the aggressor in the situation. <laughs> I'm like drunk as fuck, taking this guy's hat off his head. He's just like over it. And he's a really nice guy. He's sober. And it's like, he doesn't want to fucking kill me, you know? So he says, look, dude, you don't want to do this. I know Krav Maga. <laughs> And if you don't know what Krav Maga is, that's the self-defense that they teach the military. Like the baddest dudes on the fucking planet know Krav Maga. And that's what saved my life, was miscommunication. Uh. Because I thought he said he knew Tim McGraw. <laughs> and I got so excited, I forgot I was trying to fight this guy. I was like, you know the Indian outlaw? That's a, that's a Tim McGraw song. <laughs> At that point, I was just really living like I was dying. That's a Tim McGraw song. I was really lucky they just didn't punch me in the face over and over again. That's a Nelly song <laughs> featuring Tim McGraw. We got like nine more minutes on Tim McGraw, guys, so I need y'all to strap in. He's got like 13 fucking albums. <laughs> No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, I'm done talking about Tim McGraw. All right, I'm done. But did y'all like it? Yes. Did y'all love it? Woo! You want some more of it? Oh, Got you again. Yeah. I promise I won't say the name of any more Tim McGraw songs, but I hope when you think of Tim McGraw, you think of me. Uh. That's a Taylor Swift song. <laughs> no Swifties in the crowd, all right. <laughs> It's, uh, it's been a rough year. Pornhub doesn't exist in Texas anymore. <laughs> so I don't have my normal coping mechanisms. Got so bad today to jack off using my imagination. <laughs> Turns out, I'm pretty fucking gay, dude. <laughs> How am I supposed
supposed to tell my mom <laughs> that I'm a Democrat now? Because <laughs> you can't be one without the other, right? Like, I'm gonna vote against Mellon Rights. That's like a woman vote for Greg Abbott. That shit's not happening. <laughs> Had a birthday a few weeks ago, just turned 37. Woo! I'm getting old. I know I'm getting old because the world confuses me now. There's things that I don't understand. And if I don't understand something, I don't believe in it. And if I don't believe in it, it doesn't exist. You know, it's kind of like ghosts, right? Like, I don't believe in ghosts, so ghosts don't exist. All right? A couple other examples. Uh, is my girlfriend in here? Where's she at? What's that word that you're always saying that I do? Uh, you mean gaslighting? Yeah, gaslighting? <laughs> That shit's not fucking real. That crazy bitch made that shit up. <laughs> but the one that really gets me is autism. <laughs> autism doesn't exist. That shit's not real. I know it's not real because of the way that people say they have autism, right? Like, they talk about having autism the same way that white people used to talk about being part Native American. You know, like, oh, one sixteenth Cherokee, you know, and they're like, oh, my grandma is autistic, so I'm one-eighth autistic. I'm like, that's not, that's not how that works. So I was born in the 80s, right? So we didn't have autism. You were either retarded or you weren't. Some people were right on the cusp. And if you were right on the cusp, you better be good at football or else high school's gonna fucking suck. <laughs> I was all district. <laughs> you guys ever been to the Texas uh, Renaissance Festival? Woo! He also, he's my fuck said huzzah, all right? This joke's about you, I hope you know that, all right? <laughs> Y'all seen that new documentary on HBO about the Texas Restaurant Festival, right? I really like that documentary because it proves a theory that I've had for like a long time. That the cooler a person is at the Renaissance Festival, the more of a loser that person is in real life. Like, if you were at the Renaissance Festival and you saw a guy with a turkey leg, you'd be like, Where'd you get that turkey leg? <laughs> if I had a turkey leg on this stage right now, <laughs> you'd be very concerned for my well-being. <laughs> You're at the Renaissance Fair, you see a guy dressed like a pirate. You're like, hey, my kid loves pirates. Can I take a picture with you? <laughs> if I was dressed like a pirate right now, <laughs> you'd be very concerned for your well-being. <laughs> You're at the Renaissance Fair, you see a woman in a corset, right? Big old titties, they're all popping out. You'd be like, that's pretty cool. If there was a woman in the front row right now in a corset, big old titties, and they were popping out. I guess that one's cool in both situations, but maybe it's just the guys that are losers in real life. I don't know. All of those titties don't count, though. Fat girl titties don't count. No, they don't count. <laughs> what are you, fucking... Stab You're like, this fat motherfucker trying to shoot about big girls. Opposites attract, all right? I like uh, In case y'all can't tell from my personality, my wife left me. So I've been going to a lot of strip clubs. The other day I went to a strip club, I saw something I'd never seen a strip club in my entire life. Uh. A blind man. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, it's probably cheaper to listen to Akon at home. <laughs> he was singing like aggressively loud for the situation. He was like, I see you whining up on that pole. I was like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> I felt real bad though, because he threw like 600 singles at the cigarette machine. <laughs> And all I can think is how lucky this man is that I am not his friend. Because he'd be like, yo, Mike, let's go to the strip club. I'd be like, hey, get in the car. Drive around my neighborhood for 20 minutes. Come right back to my house, put some Akon on, and watch him throw all this money on my couch. If he gets a little suspicious, I throw a little ass. I've talked a lot of shit up here tonight. I like to end my sets by taking myself 
down a few pegs and oh. humble myself. So I'm gonna tell you guys the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. It's a true story. When I was 14 years old, I was in first period English class. It was Spirit Week. Y'all know what Spirit Week is? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, homecoming, and it's a different theme uh, every day. Well, today's theme was Nerd Day. <laughs> which my first period English teacher, who was also the cheerleading coach, took us, I'm gonna dress up like Britney Spears in the Hit Me Baby one more time video. Uh, Knee-high socks, plaid skirt, shirt tied up, titties popping out, all right? I'm 14. <laughs> What do you think happened? Oh, you got an erection. That's right, I got an erection. <laughs> she got it late as fuck, too. She was like, oh, shit, you got a phone. <laughs> but it felt different. Oh, oh. It felt strange. It didn't feel like any boner I'd ever had before. Bill <laughs> gets up, everybody leaves class. I get a blast because I don't want to see me pitching a tent. <laughs> and I realized why it felt different. Uh-oh. My fly was down, and my fully erect penis was sticking out of my pants. The teacher looks at me, looks at my dick, looks at me, looks at my dick, looks at me, looks at my dick. Looks at me, looks at my dick. I do what any man in this room would do, I started praying. Are you there, God? It's me, your boy. If you could just make something happen that distracts her from this so that my high school career isn't ruined two weeks after it started, I would devote my life to you, God. Please don't make me, please don't make me the boner boy, God. Please don't make me the boner boy. I walk out of class, my best friend's waiting on me. He says, man, that's crazy that that happened. Oh, no. I said, fuck. How does everybody already know? He said, I don't know what you're talking about, but a plane just flew into the World Trade Center. Oh! Oh, mother. Oh. That is the true story about how I found out about 9-11. Oh. I kept my promise though, I've been a devout Muslim for 22 years. Oh. God didn't come through for me that day, but Allah, that's the oh. one. Uh, so that's my time.